we're sitting here and we're going to talk about first comics. And I'd like everyone to introduce themselves. Just tell the audience exactly what you do with first comics. So, Alex, let's start with yourself. I'm Alex Wald. I'm art director at First Comics. I started in 1983 till 91, and now since 2011, approximately, to now. Uh, so I had a long vacation in between, and uh, I'm, I'm happy and excited to be working with a lot of new talent, and we have lots and lots of interesting books in store. Excellent. We're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm Sean Philbach of the Philbach Brothers. Uh, write and draw comic books for FIRST, which uh, we're very, very fortunate to. Uh, we work with Alex. He's, uh, we're just lucky to be here. Uh, you can talk to my brother. Hill. Okay. Uh, I'm Matt Philbach, uh, again of the Philbach Brothers. Uh, we've, uh, we've been known for uh, doing the Star Wars Clone Wars Adventures books for uh, about eight years. And uh, we have a lot of uh, graphic novels. Uh, Maxwell Strangewell, uh, Roadkill. And now we're first comics. Uh, our first book is out uh, that we wrote and drew called Junkie Star, or Tales of the, U the SS Junkie Star. A beautiful little all ages book, fun sci-fi adventure uh, and we have four other books in the process of being printed and coming out over the the next uh, few months by the end of the year now for myself my memory of first comics and no pun intended first comics was the first independent comic company i ever picked up anything from and the first comic i got was howard jakin's american flag number one and I was just stunned. I thought, oh my gosh, I've been reading Marvel, and I love Marvel, don't get me wrong, but here I am, I'm a freshman in high school, and I'm thinking, whoa, this is something I've never seen before. And I found that a lot of the comics coming out from first at that time, a lot of Mike Grell's work, uh, Grimjack, a lot of different titles that came out were just so vastly different than the norm. Is that the game plan with first now? The company first took chances on books that Marvel and DC would never have given a chance on. And it truly still carrying on that that philosophy right now with, with the new introduction. So yes. The, uh, first was always kind of the outlaw. You know, so kind of carrying on that outlaw tradition. Um, being well, that's the hats. It, well, there you go. You know, you gotta always have the cowboy somewhere. But uh, yeah, they're the ones that, that are going to be willing to do something that Marvel or DC won't, wouldn't even look at, you know? And yeah, I mean, again, we're just, we're just lucky to be there. And working with Alex, um, it's, it's so weird, again, because we grew up reading first. And we, we, when we first started out, no pun intended there, uh, we didn't even, I was telling Alex, we didn't bother sending it first because we thought, oh, those guys are so much ahead of us. We'll, we'll work up to them. And to actually have to be there now is beyond like a dream come true. It's just kind of kind of surreal. And we just feel very fortunate. And Alex, what was the mindset back in the day, let's say in 1983, when he first came aboard first. Was it was it really, let's kind of rattle the cage? Um, I, I don't know how, how codified that was, but I could say that, like in contrast, you know, the, um, there'd been like generations of product from Marvel and DC where you can see they were making a concerted effort to have a house style, to have a house look. There's a DC feel, a DC, you know, a Marvel feel, both in, in writing, uh, the visuals, the storytelling. I mean, you think of somebody like John Romita. It's like you know, like he's a quintessential Marvel artist, almost like more more than Kirby, even. You know, and and you go like, well, that's the look. It's like you know, whatever cover you know, like oh, this isn't a Romita, but it could have been. You know, it's like, and I think that our guiding principle, if we had any at all, is that the artist, the creator, dictates the product. 
you know, that you don't try to make a Grell look like a Chaikin or, or like a Staten. You couldn't come up with like three more different individual creators in terms of their, their graphic style, their, their writing, the storytelling. And, and that's, you know, for us, I think, you know, like it, it was just like an idea whose like time had come. It's like, let the creators be the creators. Let them do what they do best. And that's as true today for us as it was back then. I had honestly thought that first had gone away. And uh, just in our bit of conversation we've had prior to shooting, I learned that first has never gone away. Uh, it started out in Chicago, right here in Chicago. And I believe it's still based in Chicago. Um, but my part of it is based in uh, my second bedroom right now. Uh, but one of the, the great things about now is that, like, you know, we're very, very decentralized. There's no overhead uh, for the most part. And, uh, you know, I, I meet with Ken Levin, our director, um, at his office uh, as needed, maybe like once a month. Uh, like this month in April, I met with him twice uh, at his office. And he's like a considerable distance from me. But yeah, like we're, we're still, you know, local. Uh, we work with some local people, but you know, I, I've, I've always worked with people like like all over the map. Um, but yeah, it, it never really went away. But there was a long period where there were no new publications. Um, Ken, of course, has been very active in in ways that are less visible, working with talent. Um, and you know, like uh, you, you should actually like interview Ken. Like you know, much more inter interesting interview than, than with me uh, in terms of like what what he's doing and what his plans are uh, but yeah the, the, the company never went away well, first has had uh, a very storied history I believe you just celebrated 30 years last year so let's talk about what's out there now what can people start being excited that they can go to their friendly local comic book shop and pick up today or what's coming down the pike? Who'd like to handle that? The website starts up in uh, about two weeks, I believe, right? Um, yeah, so uh, I'm not sure, uh, first.com or? I think it's called firstcomicspublishing.com. I'm not 100% certain, and I'm sorry, that doesn't sound so great, but, um, you know, like, I, that, that's being handled by, by others, and, like, I, I don't have a lot of participation in that at this point, but I think the website will be a key marketing tool uh, for the company. Um, there, there may be some books in the stores. I'm, honestly, I'm, like, I'm, I'm so wrapped up in, like, you know, like, the stuff that I'm getting ready for printer that I'm not entirely sure, like, what, you know, who has what. But I, I think that, like, you know, we're rapidly approaching, like, a big rollout of a number of books. Um, uh, just this weekend, we received the, the Phil Bach Brothers book, Tales of the SS Junkie Star. It's available at our table today and, you know, will be soon through through channels through the internet um, uh, in July I should have the warp 30th anniversary book that collects warp number one through nine it's completely recolored by me uh, we have an introductory section uh, by Rick Obadiah and Michael uh, and it's illustrated with um, mostly previously unseen art by Neil Adams who was our, our director of the Broadway Play of Warp that, that really started it all, as well as um, photos of the theatrical production, which I'm guessing most most comics fans and people of this generation have never seen. Very cool. Now, I, I have seen some of the titles you've got available at your booth right now. Um, like the greatest hits, I believe, of Zen the Intergalactic Ninja is, is one of the books that's floating out there. Zen, yeah, Zen is out with uh, Steve Stearns and Dan Cody, and we actually worked on a book with Steve Stearns called uh, Butt Kick, Frickin' Butt, Butt, Frickin Butt Kicking Zombie Ants. Uh, so we did the art on that. Uh, came out good, and but there's going to be a, a, a second volume that, that we've been talking about. So that's in the works. 
It's going to be much more animated, and it, it'll look pretty fantastic. Like, basically everything we do. Uh, so we got, also, coming in July, we have a, a hardback a graphic novel that uh, uh, my brother and I uh, direct, or, uh, well, wrote, created, wrote, and drawn called uh, Cadaver Dogs of Winter. It'll be 9 by 13. Uh, it's going to look beautiful. Uh, Alex has been doing an incredible job on getting it ready. And uh, there's another book, hardback, can't really say much about it, called Lives, that uh, we, our uh, friend Glenn Farrington has written, and we've illustrated that is going to be a really beautiful little book. And uh, we have several other books in the process, including a, a book called Captain Freebird, which is a, a reintroduction of a character that we had in the uh, uh, late 90s that we've been meaning to come back. So, plus there's a, the Jim Kowalski book that in the process with that, which is a sequel to the book we did called Roadkill. So, so let's finish up talking about the volume that just came out, just came off the print run this week, I believe. Tuesday came back from the printer. So, just in the nick of time, the Tales of the SS Junkie Star. It's a uh, Again, we did all the Star Wars books, and we had so much fun. One of the best things about doing the Star Wars books, outside of getting paid, of course, which is always good, was uh, whenever we do signings, parents would bring their kids over, and the, they would tell us that their kids were learning to read through these books, and we always loved that. So we thought, you know, why don't we just create our own Star Wars? 